Man, Shakespeare loves his miscommunications something awful. Even his comedies feature people misunderstanding each other, making incorrect assumptions, and jumping to conclusions. And when he writes a tragedy rooted in a failure to communicate, the tragedy's doubled by how easily it could have been prevented. Othello is the story of one guy who tricks a bunch of people into hating and killing each other for basically no reason. And part of the reason why it's such an effective tragedy is how easily the whole mess could have been prevented if two people had just talked to each other. And with that, I leave you with the tragedy of Othello, the Moor of Venice. Othello begins by throwing us straight into the action with the secret marriage of Othello and Desdemona and the introduction of our two primary antagonists, this weedy bloke Rodrigo and this dude Iago. Rodrigo is a whiny idiot in love with Desdemona. Iago is the main villain of the piece and also, arguably, the main character. He gets far more lines than anybody else and he's the only character whose inner monologues are vocalized. Anyway, Iago's motivation is kind of unclear. The only thing we know for certain is that he hates Othello, but he's really good at disguising this fact and is also an expert manipulator. So everybody loves him and thinks he's the most straightforward guy around. In fact, they repeat this point so much that you have to wonder whether Iago's really good at tricking them or if they're all just terrible judges of character. Anyway, Iago initially demonstrates his nefariousness by alerting Desdemona's daddy about the marriage in an attempt to get Othello in trouble. Daddy drags Othello before the Duke of Venice and the Duke's all like, ah, just the man I wanted to see. Othello, I need you to go to Cyprus to defend them from the Turks or something. And Daddy's like, but he married my daughter! He probably used witchcraft or something because who would ever fall in love with someone like that? <laughs> That brings up an interesting side note. Othello's the only Shakespeare character who's explicitly of African origin, although there's a lot of scholarly debate over what part of Africa he's from. His skin color and origin are referenced a lot in the play, usually derogatorily, because racism isn't just for Americans, kids! Othello's like, What if I told you that Desdemona fell in love with me because of my intriguing and dangerous past? Oh, right, I forgot to mention, this Othello is played by Lawrence Fishburne, also known as Morpheus. And Desdemona shows up and says, God, Dad, why you gotta embarrass me so much? So Daddy's like, Oh, all right, I guess guess you have my blessing or whatever. So then the Duke's like, okay, well, now that that's settled, get your butt to Cyprus. But Desdemona's like, ooh, I want to go too. That active war zone sounds like a great place to consummate my marriage. Because this is such a great plan, the Duke immediately agrees. Iago persuades Rodrigo to disguise himself and go to Cyprus after the others, supposedly so Rodrigo can then woo Desdemona. Because Iago's such a good friend, Rodrigo instantly agrees. <sighs> Now here's where the play kind of shifts focus. Iago has a plan to completely destroy Othello's life and happiness, and this is where he starts to put it into effect. So the plan goes like this. He's gonna trick Othello into believing that Desdemona is having an affair with Othello's trusted lieutenant, a guy named Cassio. Then he's going to feed Othello's paranoia until he snaps and kills Desdemona. Why is he doing this, you might ask? Well... I'd kind of like to know that too. Iago's reason for hating Othello is one of those big questions that hasn't ever been adequately answered. Early on in the play, he suggests that there's a rumor that Othello slept with his wife Amelia, but it's never addressed and there's never any evidence that it's anything close to true. Some theories just suggest that he's racist. I don't know. Anyway, the crew arrives in Cyprus after a convenient storm wipes out the entire Turkish fleet. Remember that? The reason they were going there in the first place? And following their arrival, Rodrigo shows up too. So here's where Iago sets the ball rolling on his dastardly plan. The first thing he does is gets Cassio super drunk at the celebratory party, and then he tricks Rodrigo into picking a fight with Cassio by convincing him that his love Desdemona is going all dewy-eyed over the guy. Because Rodrigo's an idiot, he gets his butt kicked, which is somewhat unfortunate because it means that Cassio gets in trouble and Othello strips him of his rank. Just as planned. Now Cassio's heartbroken and goes to cry on his good buddy Iago's shoulder. Iago suggests that Cassio goes and talk to Desdemona, who could then ask Othello to give Cassio another chance. Cassio's like, that's a great idea! Oh, you're such a good friend, Iago. I trust you with my life. Just as planned. So Cassio goes to Desdemona, who promises to do everything in her power to convince Othello to give him a second chance. In fact, she's so passionate about it that she promises to constantly tell Othello how great Cassio is and how much he deserves another chance. Iago, meanwhile, begins phase two of his plan. In this part, he starts suggesting to Othello that Desdemona and Cassio are getting busy when he isn't looking, and that's why Desdemona is so set on getting Cassio back in Othello's good graces. This suggestion will make Othello paranoid and thus more vulnerable. So he goes and tracks down Othello to have a little heart-to-heart -heart about Desdemona and successfully convinces the poor guy that Desdemona might be secretly having an affair. Unsurprisingly, this seriously wigs Othello out. Iago enters phase three of the plan. For this step, he asks his wife Amelia to steal a handkerchief from Desdemona. How nefarious, right? No, no, this is a special handkerchief. It is, in fact, the first present that Othello gave Desdemona and is very important to the both of them. Luckily for him, Desdemona accidentally drops it, so Amelia grabs it and gives it to Iago, who goes and plants it in Cassio's room. Over to Othello! Othello's gotten very paranoid and upset from what Iago told him, and orders Iago to bring him some real evidence for his claim, or else he'll make him regret it, Morpheus-style. 
Fortunately for Iago, he won't have to face the full fury of Othello's kung fu because, as we know, he can prove to him that Cassio's in possession of a sign of Desdemona's affection. Just as planned. Stage 4 of the dastardly plan of dastardness. Iago knows that Cassio has been engaging in bedroom shenanigans with a woman named Bianca and is rather smitten with her. So while Othello hides and listens in on their conversation, Iago strikes up a conversation with Cassio about the beautiful love of his life that Iago is very careful not to name, so that Cassio can happily rant about how great she is in bed and how he plans on marrying her soon. Othello, just as Iago planned, interprets this as a discussion of Desdemona. Yeah, we get it. Then Bianca storms in, demanding to know why Cassio left another woman's handkerchiefs in her chambers. Yep, it's Desdemona's all right. This scrap of evidence is enough for Othello to believe everything Iago told him, and he decides to kill Desdemona for what she's supposedly done to him. Iago, while they're on the subject, helpfully volunteers to murder Cassio. But then some plot stuff happens that isn't directly caused by Iago. Crazy, am I right? Messengers from Venice arrive with Desdemona in tow to tell Othello that since the Turkish fleet was helpfully sunk by that storm, he's being called back to Venice tomorrow and Cassio will stay behind to keep track of Cyprus. Othello ignores the messengers and instead confronts Desdemona, calling her all kinds of nasty names before storming off. Desdemona is, of course, horrified and confused and turns to her dear old friend Iago. <sighs> So Iago comforts Desdemona, saying that Othello must just be tired from all that politics he supposedly had to do. Just as Desdemona leaves, Rodrigo storms in, demanding to know why Iago's win over Desdemona in just three days by growing a beard and using all your money plan has instead left him broke, pissed, and beardy. So Iago persuades him to go and murder Cassio, which must sound like an amazing idea because Rodrigo runs right out there and tries to stab the poor guy. Luckily, Cassio is still a protagonist and easily, but non-fatally, shanks Rodrigo. Unfortunately for Cassio, Iago chooses this moment to stab him in the leg from behind and flee secretly into the night, from which he emerges a moment later looking appropriately concerned for his health. As soon as he learns who attacked Cassio, he zips over to Rodrigo and stabs him around 15 times in the chest. Over to Othello, who's talking to Desdemona. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna kill you now, so you should pray so your soul can go to heaven. And Desdemona's like, but I haven't even done anything! And then Othello suffocates her. But apparently she survives just long enough to give some tragic last words before finally biting it. Othello justifies his murder to Amelia by explaining that Desdemona had cheated on him and Iago told him everything. And Amelia, of course, is like, and you listen to him? My husband is a lying a-hole to everybody, you idiot! Iago and a bunch of other dudes come running in, and Amelia's like, Iago, your lying ways got Desdemona murdered! And Othello Othello's like, no, Iago's an honest guy. Desdemona was clearly just a slut of epic proportions. Iago's like, listen to the man, dear. He knows what he's talking about. And Amelia's like, hey, remember that handkerchief that precipitated this whole mess? Well, I was the one who found it and gave it to Iago, and he was the one who put it in Cassio's room. This revelation, of course, causes Iago's whole web of lies to come crashing down around him, prompting him to shank Amelia and flee. He is immediately caught and dragged back in, where Othello stabs him but doesn't kill him, because at this point, Othello's thinking of death is pretty much the best thing ever. He explains the whole mess to Cassio and a couple of other guys who brought Cassio and also reveal that Rodrigo had written down the whole plan, helpfully verifying his story. Othello gives a kick-ass tell my story speech, and then, like all the best tragic heroes, stabs himself. Yay. Say something.